Hi, this is Kent Lee and I teach computer science at Luther College. In this video I'm going to show you how to iterate over a sequence. The word iterate means to repeat something over and over again and that turns out that that's an important part of computer programming and in Python we have several different ways of iterating over a sequence. In this video I'm going to show you how to use a for loop to iterate uh, through a sequence. So I'm going to start out by uh, by demonstrating what a for loop is and, and how we might go about it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, ask the user to enter their name. Um, so I'm going to say name equals input. Uh, please enter your name. And by now we know that uh, calling input returns a string to the to the uh, program. So name will be a string after it's read from the user. And a string is a sequence of characters, and we can iterate through that sequence of characters by using a for loop. So I can say for c in name. Um, I can use any variable I want here. The thing that comes after the in is the sequence that you want to iterate over. And you put a colon at the end, and then you press enter, and it's indented like an if-then statement then. So the code inside the for loop is the code that comes after the line with the for on it. So this code that's indented is going to be repeated over and over again. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and just print C to the screen so we can see what that does. So I'm going to go ahead and save this, put it on my desktop. We'll call this thing uh, um, iterate.py and we'll go ahead and have us enter a name. I'll enter my name in this case. And you can see I iterated through that sequence. I repeated the body of the for loop, which is the code that's indented inside the for loop, uh, for each character in the sequence name. So for every character in name, I let C be equal to that character, and then I printed C. So the idea here is that what's happening under the covers is that C is equal to the next character in name in this case, because name comes after the in. That's what a for loop means. For C in name means let C be equal to the next character in name and then execute the body of the for loop. So you can see here I printed Kent, uh, one per line, one character per line, because each print statement says to go to a new line and print a value. Now, that works great if you want to go through a sequence character by character, um, and, uh, and you don't really have to do anything other than that, or go through a sequence element by element, because it will turn out that there are other types of sequences that we can look at as well. Um, but if I don't want to go through element by element, if I wanted to say go every other element, um, then I can't do for C in name. So if I want to go through and do something for every other element in a sequence, um, so for example, if I wanted to go through and do every other, uh, every other character in my name, I couldn't do it the same way. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to generate a new sequence, and we'll see, we can still do it with a for, but we'll see how this new sequence might work. So um, for example here, if I, um, if I want to go through this sequence, I can use something called range. And there's a, a thing called a list, and I'm going to see what is the list of the range of uh, five, for example. So what I get here, this is a list with a square bracket around, square brackets around it. And when I call range 5, I get a list 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And I can iterate over that sequence as well. Well, it turns out that can be useful because if I have some string that's equal to Kent, for example, and I want to go through that sequence, I can get individual characters out of that string by looking at, we've looked at this before, by using the subscript into the, uh, into the sequence, or into the name in this case, into the string. So s sub 0 is the k, s sub 2 is the n. If I wanted to go every other character, 
I would want to generate a sequence for the string Kent that contains 0 and 2 and use them as subscripts into, uh, into the string. So for example here, if I say for i in range, and I don't know how long this name is that was entered, so I'm going to use length, len, is the length of a, um, of a uh, string. So len of name, okay? And here's another way to use name. You can say where you want it to start at. It's going to stop at one less than the second value. And then the increment, how much it's going to increment each time is the next value. So for example, um, if I wanted to increment by two, I can do that. Now let's try that down below here and just see how that works. So if I were to do range zero comma length of s comma two down here in the Python shell, you can see that I get, oops, I need to do a list of that so I can see what the list is, range of zero comma uh, length of s comma two. I need one more parent. So I get the list zero two in that case. So um, so range zero zero says start at zero. Length of s says to go one less than the uh, to one less than the length of s. S is four in this case, so it'd go up to three by twos, and I end up with zero and two as the two numbers in that sequence. So this sequence that I've given here, if I do print name sub i, then I will get every other character in the sequence. Let's try this out. Oops, I made a mistake. Um, I need, uh, I have a syntax error here. Left parent, left parent, right parent, right parent. Um, I in range is what I forgot here. For I in range there. Okay, so if I enter Kent, the first example prints Kent, the second example prints just the K and the N because I went every other character in that example. Okay, well I can do other things with this too. So for instance, I'm going to just do another example here. Let's look at example three here. I can do for i in range, and I could start, uh, again, I can start wherever I want, so I could start at length of name minus one. So length of name, if, if name is four, if it's Kent, then length of name would be three, or length of name would be four, minus one would be three. That would be the last character in the string. In this case, if I want to go backwards through it, I'd go to minus one. That would be the stop, one past the stop. We always have to go one past the stop. And minus one here would uh, say to go by minus ones. So in that case, if I print name sub k or sub i, I'll go ahead and run this. So in my first example, and I printed all the characters forward here, K-E-N-T, but if I want to go backwards to neck, um, example three here goes backwards through my, uh, through my name or through anybody's name that's, at, that's uh, entered. So for example here, if I enter some other name, let's say uh, Edward, um, I go through Edward forward and I go through Edward backward here. So um, so we can see here how to use a for loop to go through a sequence, just character by character or element by element. We can use range to go through a sequence every other element, or we can use it to go through every element if we would like to, uh, with subscripting in that case, so using name sub i. Um, we can have our for loop go through backwards if we would like to, backwards through a string by generating a range of indices that go backwards through the string. So again, making sure that you understand here, the i is going to be equal to each value in this sequence here. And if we were going to look at that, then in, with our example that we have in our Python shell, if s is equal to Kent, the list of the range of length of s 
minus 1 going to minus 1 by minus 1 uh, would give us the sequence 3, 2, 1, 0, which are the indices going backwards through the string. So if I print each character at that, in, that next index, it'll print backwards.